Frostbite Caves is among my least favourite worlds in PC2. I think out of every world in the game, it's the one that has the least amount of qualities I consider redeemable. While I don't like Dark Ages or Dressing Marsh, perhaps even more than I don't like Frostbite Caves, those two worlds at the very least are more commonly accepted as bad, and as someone who plays mods, those two worlds are far more likely to receive positive changes, that improve their gameplay by adding new mechanics and improving level pacing. Frostbite Caves, however, typically is a bit of a problem child. Dark Ages issues can be band-aided with a good new special to mitigate the awkward pacing of worlds, and at least tends to lend itself well to creative and interesting level designs. Andressing Marsh is a prime available world for a massive rework to its mechanics, due to it being, functionally, a playground for modders to add really whatever they want. Trust by Caves issues, unfortunately, run a little deeper than most. Frostbite Cave suffers from a few really big issues, but I feel make the modded experience in particular rough. The world is so focused on ice winds as a mechanic, but people typically don't even think to look into changing it, instead trying to substitute fixes elsewhere. Say, improving the synergy with slider tiles, or finding ways to make the fire everywhere playstyle of Frostbite Caves more interesting, or provide reasons to use other plants. And zombies added generally struggle to play off of pre-existing Frostbite Caves. New ways to freeze plants are typically easy to counter. Slider tiles are often impossible to make full use of due to weasels and dodo avoiding it so easily. And Trog is hard to synergize with anything but Trog. I think it's safe to say that out of all the worlds in PZ2, Frostbite Caves is the world that has stagnated the most. This is partially due to a certain red imp we'll make special notice of later, but Frostbite Caves rarely feels interesting between different mods. You bring a fire plant, your generic attacker of choice, and deal with basically everything the same way from there. But there is a mod that released semi-recently that changed a lot of that. A mod called Requiem. Requiem is a very cool mod that does a lot of cool things. Two main things it does are worth noting here. Firstly, it modifies the core vanilla worlds more than any other mod has done before. Not being afraid to fully rework worlds from the ground up, or creating new ones if the circumstances demand as such. And secondly, plants are now bought from a store instead of unlocked in levels, meaning the player needs to specifically purchase plants they want to use, but also need to be guaranteed to beat any level with a basic arrangement of plants to avoid being stuffed locked yet typically open to be beaten with as many plants as possible to encourage the player to experiment. Both of these obviously make a world like Frostbite Caves, a world built around a set few plants, and whose most common zombies feature strategies that don't particularly like variety, a prime candidate for a full rework. And by god it got one. Almost every element of this world has been rethought out, recreated, and with several new zombies that are some of the best inclusions Frostbite Caves has ever seen. And on top of all this, it managed to be one of the first worlds in the mod. And works there. Why? Well, it's a first Frostbite Caves where heating is truly optional. Everything! But let's focus on the biggest change. Ice Winds. I have made it clear in videos in the past, but I think this is the number one issue of Frostbite Caves, and Requiem does something truly innovative with them. They aren't here! In addition, ice blocks on the field will now defrost automatically. While damage can speed the process up, it is far from required, and often not even helpful. Frost is functionally an entirely new mechanic now, and also much easier to counter. However, this mechanic doesn't come without drawback. For instance, this actually applies to zombie ice blocks, including ones from the start of a level. If something is in an ice block, you need a plan to deal with it early on into the level, even sooner if you start hitting it early. But more noticeably, there's a lot of additional strength this world has to make up for it. For a start, basics have 50% more HP, ignoring armor, which makes them quite tough to shift, albeit with a slight speed decrease. More dangerously, however, are the specials, which are designed to take full advantage of this new frost system. Requiem worlds are only 11 levels long each, so they only need 4 special zombies. Chocolate ice blocks, as do all other zombie ice blocks in this world, have a whopping 2000 HP! 
which means they have almost equal HP to Brickhead Zombies. So despite the natural heating, they can easily create an absolute wall. Dodo is also fully reworked. It will now instead fly over the first target it sees, acting closer to a pole vaulter than a weird jetpack clone. The other two zombies, however, are both entirely custom. Chieftain Zombies from the Chinese version of PZ2, and has the same concept here, but a radically different execution. Instead of freezing all plants a little bit, he will fully freeze a plant in front, followed by two stages on the one behind, and one stage at the third plant. This is an ability you can do quite often, and means you are often guaranteed to have frozen plants on your lawn, hindering your offensive progress. And in multiple stack onto the same lane by, say, by slider tiles, then they can rapidly freeze entire rows of plants if not dealt with. Finally, and most funny of all, is Yeti Zombie. Yeti is a slow-moving tank, with extremely high defenses, and a really fun ability! Now that's a great money shot we just put into every single video relating to Requiem ever! Yeti is THE endgame threat, and is absolutely devastating if he gets right in the middle. Freezing every plant in a 5x5 area is a massive problem, and often requires you to find ways to keep him at bay. And all the other zombies tend to work well with them, opening up ways or offering defensive effects to let him get close, or benefiting a ton from his board removal abilities. Even works well than bloody self. There is also a new ambush, which is very memorable. Glacial Blessing is a massive speed boost that applies to all zombies on screen. I need to remind you that the basics have extra HP, yet it exists, and Dodo slash Trog can make significantly more progress doing their thing during the boosts. It isn't extremely long, but it's still long enough to be a serious problem, and one that must be paid attention to. In addition, though far less important, is the Endless Exclusive Weasel Hoarder. Requiem has special zombies only available in Endless Zones and Bonus Levels, and for Frostbite Caves, that zombie is Weasel Hoarder, who acts as their vanilla self working well with the other specials to make single-target plants much weaker, and appreciating the quick bursts of plants being disabled seems to overall be the theme. This definitely seems to be a lot of changes, but on paper it's harder to see how it all works. And furthermore, why is it so important for heating to be optional in Frostbite Caves? In Requiem Frostbite Caves, heating isn't a necessary feature. Sure, heating is still absolutely useful, but what's far more important is not the ability to heat, it's the immunity to being frozen, which alone dramatically opens up the amount of strategies available. Tornut is immune to frost in Requiem, and is a plant you start with. Notably though, all freeze mechanics in the world focus on freezing your plants in the front, so having a wall plant immune to it helps make the world as a whole so much more manageable. It actually even counters all the zombies in this world, but Trog, and is an extremely effective answer to all the frost-based shenanigans in the world, and I think honestly single-handedly makes a great argument about the usefulness of heating. Don't get me wrong, heaters are still very good in the world. They are one of the absolute best answers to dealing with a yeti gone wrong, and having a few around to ensure chieftain sacks don't completely wreck lanes isn't a bad play, but it's not really a reason to lock yourself to them. In fact, a lot of the world can be friending without resorting to frostbase shenanigans. Just random slider tiles like this, not an uncommon sight in this mod, can pose a significant challenge that a lot of fire plants don't particularly enjoy, due to their higher and average costs, with Dodo slash Trog generally not being friend by heating at all. Plants like Purple don't even really play well into the world, making some of the premier heating options not really good here. This pretty much completely flips the script for Frost by Caves, if that wasn't obvious. You are significantly more free when playing through the world to really just do whatever the hell you want, which feels amazing. It's probably the first time I've ever chose to not play with heating plants, and have that not completely backstab me. And yet, I feel like most of the reasons people like Frost by Caves are still relevant here too. Slider tiles are still in the world, and if nothing else, are far more utilized in vanilla world. With a world focusing more on threats who use slider tiles, you can actually rely on them to redirect zombies, unlike in vanilla where everything remotely friending just ignored them, turning them from a unique gimmick to actively restrict dangerous zombies like troglobites, and having to be continuously managed by DPS 
due to Dodo and Weasel being so prominent. While both still exist in Requiem, both Chieftain and Yeti are zombies whose exact placement on the battlefield matters so much that you need to be constantly aware of where they are going, which plays far better into the slider tiles than a lot of the zombies in the vanilla world. And even then, Dodos are so much easier to manage in this mod, they their Paul Volter-esque nature, and can be disabled and forced to follow the default paths. In this regard, I think this Frostbite Caves is definitely a great basis of a direction future mods should take Frostbite Caves. It shows the value of reapproaching core mechanics of the world, and I think mods should, in future, look to this as a good example of what can be accomplished. I also say this because I find what mods instead often do to be far stupider. And screw it, I want to make this video longer, so I think comparing what Requiem does to other mods helps showcase what exactly is the issue. You see, there is one specific change people always make in any mod that gets to Frostbite Caves. And whenever people add zombies to Frostbite Caves, well, a certain red imp always comes to mind first. Dragon Imp is a really interesting zombie conceptually, in that it has legitimately no reason to exist. I have a tinfoil hat theory that this was originally intended for a gimmick built around fire in some version of Dark Ages we never saw, as both Fire P and Pearpult originate from this period. But there's no other real evidence of this. In the game he appears in a single level outside of Endless, the Zomboss fight, but there's really no obvious rhyme or reason to him. He's fully immune to all fire damage, which also includes most explosives, unlike in PZ1. You might see where I'm going with this. Let's ignore this foreshadowing and instead talk about how impractical this zombie is in most scenarios. Fire plants are rarely encouraged in PZ2, with extremely few zombies or worlds really encouraging the use of it. While fire damage in PZ1 is typically associated with high damage for cheap costs, this isn't really a massive thing in PZ2 in its mods. Due to its low frequency as a trait, and the dichotomy between chill and fire being far as a thing here. Whereas in PZ1 you run fire for damage and chill for stalling, here the game has evolved far beyond such simple classifications, where it can now slow in a myriad of ways, from sap to stall gas. And high damage is more so tied to melee plants over fire, and there's a great variety even outside of this. <sighs> You're all still hyperfixing in me saying, fire plants are really encouraging PZ2 with extremely few zombies or worlds really encouraging the use of it. Well, yeah, you know where we are going. So we have a zombie who is fire immune, really using vanilla, yet it's still a zombie fully designed and with no animations, making it easy to retexture, especially due to his actual trait being able to apply on literally any zombie, for some reason. And Frostbite Caves is a world where players often feel forced into using fire plants exclusively, and needs a new zombie more than many other worlds. The square shaped box fits into the square shaped hole. This, unfortunately, was the first mistake. This isn't child's play. Well, literally it is, but metaphorically it's not. No, what it actually is, is a little something called game design. And I'm going to be honest here. If you see a square-shaped hole, that's a trap. And here, Dragon Imp is the ultimate modest trap, because despite everything people think, it simply does not work in Frostbite Caves. And I want to explain why with a simple question and a simple answer. What makes Frostbite Caves a weak world? In the broadest of terms, it's a world that locks a player out of the game. It denies the player the ability to play the game how they want to play it, which Plants vs. Zombies as a franchise thrives on. Ice Winds aren't themselves a weak mechanic, it's how heating works, which Ice Winds just so happen to directly interfere with. Heaters are a problem specifically because they are otherwise normal plants, which means the player is forced to play directly into a very limited selection of plants. In a world like Big Wave Beach or Dark Ages, the player is forced to bring certain plants, but the world still allows them to play in whatever way they want. In Frostbite Caves, though, heaters aren't typically much weaker than other plants. Fire Peter in the Vanilla is super easy to get, I can solo the entire world without question, and Hot Potato as a plant is so pathetic that it can't make up for the lack of a more traditional heater. And in mods, 
Purple typically gets buffed, so it's not bad. So relying on it wholeheartedly? Well, that's just how you play the plants. But I want to make something very clear. Introducing Dragon Imp doesn't change this. In fact, it only makes things worse. The player can now absolutely not rely on fire plants in any real capacity, because all that damage is gone when the fire means zombies in the lane. So instead the player has to place a couple of fire plants alongside a group of other plants to do the actual damage. But now the player both has limited space to plant said plants, which have to contend with some production still, but they have limited space in a world of slider tiles, a gimmick which heavily reduces the amount of space the player has to work with in total. And so now every level strategy is now boiled down to the exact same, especially if a player realizes that turtling is the absolute best way to make value of such limited space, as that's the best way to make full coverage of heating plants across multiple columns. All this for something that most players already actually do. I feel the need to point out that the core to eater plants already suck against quite a few things in Frostbite Caves already. Weasel Horde screws with a purple terrifically, requiring other plants that are likely not fire immune to reliably deal with. And if IP Shooter and Mods is typically either a super heavy option, or Lightroom doesn't do fantastically against Halls of Zombies, only being able to repeat on DPS, requiring in longer levels the player bring a heavier support option, or good usage of walls or instas. All Dragon Imp actually does is force the player to play in yet another hyper specific strategy, making Frostbite Caves' restrictions so much worse. Now, as a mod developer myself, I want to make something clear. Mods that do this aren't necessarily bad, and the developers themselves aren't necessarily idiots. That's not to say Dragon Imp making Frostbite Caves worse is a rare viewpoint, I'd argue it's extremely common, but it's just so easy for a developer to make this mistake. After all, the core benefit of making fire-only strats, not the de facto way to play Frostbite Caves, seems a powerful tool. But that's coming from a developer mindset. Designers don't view the game the same way as the players do, and that's the problem really. That disconnect will always exist. Especially for modders which, remember, are always hobbyists, and are not truly experienced in game design, who like training and often work in small, dedicated teams. This disconnect can easily result in bad decisions. I don't blame modders for adding Dragon Imp or a version of Imp to mods, but I think it's quite clear by now that we need to step back as a community and accept that this was always nothing more than a mistake. Dragon Imp isn't even really an utterly useless zombie. It's actually a great zombie for gimmick stages. It's a great option to turn endangered plants against a player, and for certain locked and loaded stages, it can genuinely be a great tool to make levels interesting. But Dragon Imp isn't even really alone here. This is exactly the same as Jester or Parasol, two similar zombies which functionally do the same thing. They are zombies that counter specific kinds of plants, and renders them unusable in levels they are in. But that's really all they can functionally add. Lost City and Dark Ages are not better worlds for Jester and Parasol zombies existing, and neither is Frost by Caves with Dragon Imp. Frankly, all this just makes me respect what Rec Room does more. It doesn't really fall into many pitfalls when it comes to Frostbite Caves. Sure, I would have preferred it if heating was outright removed, but the full rework of the world came across as very well thought out to me, and was very fun to play. I certainly don't think every mod can just be Rec Room's Frostbite Caves, but I think it shows that wider reworks to the world do in fact work, and if nothing else, it gives a template for good changes that could be made to this world for other mods to look into and consider. And the rest of this video is just because I'm just sick of Dragon Imp existing, honestly. I don't like Frostbite Caves to begin with, and I really think people need to step back and reconsider HOW they can improve a world when modding it, instead of simply going with their gut feeling or crime mentality. Especially when it makes the world this much worse. I think in many regards, Frostbite Caves is one of the most misunderstood worlds in the game, with strengths that can and have proven difficult to draw out. 
Hence why the Dragon M solution is so enticing. But I think the real solutions will always be more complicated. To make Frostbite Caves good as a world is even more advanced than what Requiem did on the surface. What Requiem really did to make the world as strong as it was, is strong level design. Balancing the slide at tiles will allow Troll to get in and cause mayhem. Keeping levels distinct and unique by using specials carefully, instead of using them every single level. While I may be able to point to more broad strokes, realistically speaking, any idea can be a good one. As long as taken carefully, approach smartly, and use well in levels. Truthfully, even Dragon Aim and Frostbite Caves could work just fine, as long as it's used correctly. Used in few levels, and used a strong purpose behind where it is. Something I really don't feel it is currently used as. Regardless, this has been my semi-quick filler video to get back on schedule after I managed to delete all my goddamn scripts, totaling about 3 hours of script I've been working on for the past, like, month. Whoops! And then I immediately got the flu! So this video is pushed back by another week! I love life! It's so fun! Whatever. I hope you enjoyed this strange little video in the middle of my upcoming projects. However, rushed it has proven to be. Next video is on the Bonnet Car version, by the way. I won't elaborate more. This has been Creeps, and have a good one.